There we go. Good morning, eighth grade. It is Monday the 16th. So uh, make sure you copy these down in your notebook, as always, of course. I'll collect these in December, the week before Christmas break. Um, so we'll do these questions tomorrow, which means uh, Wednesday, Thursday will be section four. Friday is review. Uh, would mean Monday is review game, and then Tuesday is your test, uh, which will put us in uh, good shape schedule-wise uh, because you have next Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off. So we're going to try to get that test in. Uh, before we go on for Thanksgiving, we're talking about big business, of course. Uh, and I'm going to try to keep this under 15 minutes today. We'll see. Um, so the foundation for growth, as the title of the slide says there, is uh, basically the discovery of petroleum. Now, we've gone on all year more in class than on you know, these videos. But men basically have been... Uh, making most of the decisions for the entirety of American society. We talk, we're talking now in seventh grade about uh, the Constitutional Convention and the Declaration of Independence coming up and all that stuff. So that's not really a surprise. And I, like I said, as a, as a man, uh, I'm going to say this, and I don't think it should be offensive, but we, uh, generally speaking, uh, in large groups, make not great decisions all the time. Uh, to put it nicely, we talked about the Wild West in the last chapter. What happened when you just had entire towns built by men? Uh, you know, we always give the famous example of helmets. Um, the fact that helmets exist show you what kind of decision makers we are. We were doing things that turned our uh, brains into pudding, and we were like, well, we've either got to stop or put boxes on our heads and keep smashing them together, and we made the decision to make uh, head boxes. And so uh, petroleum and the um, discovery of petroleum was an incredibly lucrative, money-making, multi-billion dollar discovery. However, knowing men, as you probably do, you know, you're in junior high. Think about the junior high boys in your class getting together. Uh, so they found this weird substance seeping out of the ground. There was so much in Pennsylvania is literally coming out of the ground. What is your guess for the first thing they try to do with it? Yeah, they ate it is uh, probably the guess that a lot of you had. And so, yeah, they were like, hey, there's this weird uh, thing coming out of the ground. What are we going to do? They're like, well, let's eat it. <laughs> and for months they were like, this is medicine. Um, you should eat this and you'll feel better. And in reality, eating raw petroleum is not really good for you. It's not, I mean, if you eat too much of anything, it could be very bad for your health, but it's not really going to, um, really, it's not really deadly for you. You know, uh, the black oil you put in your car is refined, refined oil. It's not raw petroleum. I'm not encouraging you to do that, but it will give you, um, uh, it'll uh, grease up your digestive system. Let's say it that way. You're going to have uh, diarrhea for a long time. And so, after a while, they finally realized, like, well, eating this is not really working. So what's your guess for the second thing that men, they lit it on fire. That's right. And that worked. Um, that worked. Uh, we discovered that it could be a slow-burning, cheap source of energy and heat. And more importantly, for our purposes today, lubricate machinery so that pieces of metal rubbing together inside a machinery, that's why you have oil in your car or whatever machine you're talking about, does not create insane high temperatures of friction heat. And so the United States is changing from a farm economy to a factory one because we've got a lot of the three factors of production, land, labor, and capital. Land is not just the actual land that you purchase, even though it is that also, um, but it's also natural resources. And so if you're opening a furniture factory, out of, making it out of wood, trees would count as land for your purposes. Or if you're creating railroad tracks, the iron ore that is used to make steel, that's land. That is natural resource. Okay. And of course the land that you're buying itself, of course, counts as land. Also labor is a workforce. You've got to have enough workers to do the work that is needed. Of course, uh, since 1865 in America, uh, the idea of owning slaves is not legal. And so the idea being that's one of the factors you've got to take into account if you're going to open a business and a lot of businesses realize when they try to open uh, you know, they're like, well, we're going to pay our workers with the money we bring in. We don't need to take that into account before we open, which is not necessarily the case. 
um, because a lot of businesses, when they first open, aren't bringing in a profit. It takes time to get, you know, to get their costs taken care of. And that takes months, if not weeks and sometimes years. And so a lot of times the businesses can't get off the ground because they don't factor in that they've got to actually pay their labor. However, there is a large ready to work and cheap at this time, which we're going to talk about later on labor force available in America. Capital is, uh, I mean, the book wants to get complicated with that. Uh, capital is money uh, that you need to buy the things that you need to make the things. Uh, the book wants to be like, well, it's machines and tools. And sure, that's true. Um, but how do you get those things with money? And so when you're talking about uh, you're starting a business and you're like, I do or don't have the capital, what you're talking about is the money to get it off the ground. Um, one way a company could raise capital is by becoming a corporation. Basically, this is what the stock market is. If I own a business, I take it and I divide it into two parts. I did not say halves. I said parts. Okay, one part would be 51%. The other would be 49%. And then I take that 49% and I break that off into tiny pieces. And that is one part of an ownership of my company. So when you buy a stock on the stock market, you're buying a piece of ownership of whatever company it is that you're buying. And now, I didn't say like, you're not buying 1% of a company. When you buy a stock, you're buying one fraction of 1%, one ten thousandth, hundred thousandth of 1%, not even, probably not even that much. You're just buying one teeny tiny little portion of that. Why 49%? Because if I still own the 51%, I'm still making all the decisions and I can't be put under, run out of business or have decisions made against my wishes by the, the shareholders uh, because I still own the majority of the business. So we were like, hey, I'm we're your uh, shoe company. And I say, hey, this year we're going to make uh, hot pink shoes. And you're like, uh, no, we should, pretty sure we should make brown and black and white shoes just like everybody buys. And I'm like, no, hot pink. Well, let's vote on it. And then you all vote brown shoes and I vote pink. Well, guess who wins? Me, because I got 51, you got 49. And so that's how stocks work. And so the idea is you want to buy a company when it's low and then it rises, rises, rises. And when it gets high, that's when you want to sell. And that's how you make money uh, buying, you know, stocks. Uh, so you need to research what businesses are going to be successful. The story I always tell when I was in college, I got an email uh, that was offering, you had to do a survey online and it was offering like free stocks, free shares of a stock in a company. And I and everybody in my dorm was like, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm not messing with I'm too busy playing PlayStation. Like literally the first PlayStation, then we're on the fifth now. But anyway, um, anyway, there was Google and they are worth, you know, several hundred dollars per share. And it, could, I, it wasn't going to like, you know, I wasn't going to retire off that money, but I could have made a few thousand free dollars. Um, nobody that I know actually took the deal, which again, I feel stupid saying now, but that is what it is. Uh, this is 20 years ago now, so whatever. Uh, and so if you, the business grows and grows and grows, you make profits and you as a shareholder earn a share of that profit. That's called a dividend. Okay. And so um, corporations are growing and that's leading to more capital, more capital is leading to more business. And banks are also lending a lot of this money. They're like, well, these stocks are going up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Everybody's making money. We will just keep giving out loans. And that's something you should put a pin in and remember for later because that's going to come out back as the lady says in the America story of us video that we watch all the time. It's going to bite us in the butt. She says with that accent too. All right. So um, the oil and steel Rockefeller became the most famous oil industry. Uh, he owned a company named standard oil. He used what's called horizontal integration. Horizontal is a cross. That is when you combine competing companies into your own. Let's talk about fast food. That is something that we all know and understand. Some of us eat more of it than others. I eat too much of it. I've quit now, but I always say that. Um, but everybody's eaten at McDonald's at least once before in their life. And so if you were going to do horizontal integration, that would mean you would buy out Hardee's, you would buy out Wendy's, you would buy out Subway or whatever. And there are different ways to do this. Sometimes they would just uh, undersell, undercut their prices and put them out of business. Sometimes they would buy the store and just, you know, change it outright. Uh, sometimes they would buy the store, keep the name. Uh, and uh, in the oil business, it would be like, that's his oil barn. And so they would pay me to buy my business and then I would leave and then they would come in and take over and they would still be using my name because they paid for it. And so people that do like I do, they think like, hey, I'm trying to buy local. I don't want to spend money at Walmart. They're a big corporation. They would do that where they would keep my name and they would think, yeah, I'm still supporting Mr. Bats by paying $4 a gallon of oil instead of a dollar over standard oil. But really what you're doing is just giving 
uh, money to Rockefeller. So that's what horizontal integration is, is when you buy competing businesses. Again, if it were McDonald's, you'd buy Hardee's, Wendy's, Dairy Queen, etc. He lowered his prices to drive competitors out of business. We've talked about that with Walmart before. If you're going to go to Bolin's versus going to Walmart, if you go to Bolin's, you're going to buy more for a box of Lucky Charms than you are at Walmart. Um, that's because they don't sell as much, and that's part of the business plan of, of Walmart to drive their competitors out of business. Uh, now I realize that not everybody can go buy and afford to pay the higher prices at local grocery stores, but if you can, that's a good thing to do to support local people in the actual area. Um, and so they formed a trust, and so Standard Oil became a monopoly. Monopoly is one company that could, they, if you were going to buy any oil in America, it was going to be made by and produced by and sold by Standard Oil. Why is monopoly bad? Because then you have one business that controls everything and they can, what do they charge for their stuff? Whatever they feel like. Okay. If, um, whatever company, if Casey's became the only gas, uh, purveyor seller in America, the only gas station you can go to is Casey's and they control the entire gas supply. Gas is going to go up to five, six, 10, 12, $20 a gallon. Um, because no, there's no competition to keep prices low. And what are you going to do? Just not buy gas. I can't walk to school from Heron. And so that's why competition is necessary to make the free enterprise system and capitalism work. Uh, so Andrew Carnegie, he's the one that ran the steel business and he became um, a mogul uh, just like this. He dominated the uh, steel industry. He used vertical integration. Vertical integration is when you where you use all the steps of your company. So let's go back to McDonald's. We said horizontal integration would be buying competing businesses. Vertical would be if McDonald's bought, um, and they do this, um, if you had, they bought the dairy farm to make the milk for the cheese and their ice cream. If they bought a farm to create lettuce for their Big Macs, if they raise the beef, if they own the trucks that ship the things. Okay. That's vertical integration. That's where you control, you purchase every step of the way to lower your cost. And a lot of big businesses still do both of these, but uh, specifically, um, vertical integration. You, you can find, you can Google and find McDonald's has their own farms that they own to grow the stuff that they use. Um, they became philanthropists, people who used their money uh, to benefit the community. They built schools, universities, other institutions. Carnegie Hall is one of, if not the most famous concert hall in the world. Uh, the Sydney Opera House in Australia is probably first. That might be second. I don't know. I don't, I don't have the official rankings of famousness of uh, concert halls stored away in my brain. But anyway, um, Rockefeller Center, that's where they, that's a big, big building in New York. That's Rockefeller Plaza is where they light a big Christmas tree every year. Uh, it'll come that it's going to be later this month, I'm presuming. Uh, they film Saturday Night Live and the news and stuff there. NBC uh, runs their shows there. And so these monopolies are becoming too powerful. They're controlling too much of the industry. People are trying to break them up. Um, but again, laws are only as good as uh, how they're enforced. And so with little teeth in the law, actual laws, they weren't very effective for actually uh, curbing these uh, giant monopolies. And we're still having these issues now. Um, there's been a lot of antitrust lawsuits against Microsoft because if you buy any, any brand of computer at the store, uh, for the longest time, it was going to come home and it was going to boot up and it was going to be Windows. There was no really competitor. And then, and then they would win their lawsuits because of Apple. And they were like, well, you could just buy an Apple, which is true. iOS has their own operating system. But, of course, most people would argue Apple's are way, you know, Apple the computer, not the, uh, not the fruit. But Apple's are uh, super duper duper expensive. And so they would get tied up in court. Now you have Chromebooks, of course, which I'm recording on one right now, which has their own Android operating system. And they've come in and they've provided a cheap alternative. And so now that's why you've seen the prices of Chromebooks, laptops, and computers come down. And that, this is why, because now we have more competition. And so that's why monopolies are not always a good thing or never a good. Sometimes they are. Um, there are things called natural monopolies, uh, like the city water that you, that comes out of your sink. That's nat natural monopoly. You cannot have 20 uh, different companies trying to create their own water system because the ground literally can't handle the the pipes going in it would collapse and it would you know the town would be underground literally so there are some situations where there are natural monopolies but for the most part you don't want those um any number um, this is not a guessing game this is just a, i was listening to watch the video game any number between 500 and 600 is what you got to post in the question of the day just whatever pick one that's not a contest it's just a i listened to the entire video uh other than that, keep wearing your mask, wash your hands, uh, make sure you keep checking into Google Classroom because uh, cases, of course, are going up in the area. Uh, stay safe, and, uh, and uh, I'll talk to you later.